thought we'd look at some problems from your review for your first test. Uh, first, some translate problems. These are just some examples. Make sure you go over that entire list that we had earlier in the translation video. But on our first example, we have five less than twice a number. So less than, remember, is subtract, and it goes backwards. The five is what you're taking away from twice a number. This is all going to go together. can be 2x. You could have a dot in there. You could also have parentheses around the whole thing. Uh, next one. Two times the sum of a number and four. So our first operation word is times. We have two times. You're expecting the second piece of the multiplication. What you get instead is another operation word. So that one has to go in parentheses. Sum is addition. And is your separator. So a number will use a variable. And four. Third one, a number increased by three. Increased by is going to be addition. So you can do x plus three. If you switch the order, it's OK, because addition or multiplication can be switched. Fourth one, the product of five and a number. Product is your keyword, means multiplication, and is your separator. So you have five times a number, or just five x is more compact. And the last one here, difference. The difference of a number and one. Difference is subtract. It goes in order. And is your separator. So x minus 1. It must be in this order. Problem 2. Use the formula area equals L times W or length times width to find the area of a rectangle 5 feet long and 3 feet wide. This is just an application problem for an evaluate question. And so we could draw a picture if we want. This is what we have. A rectangle and it is 5 feet long and 3 feet wide. Our formula area equals length times width. You substitute so 5 feet times width is 3 feet. Just multiply. 5 times 3 is 15. And feet times feet is feet squared. Um, works just like a variable. Like x times x would be x squared. I think this next problem bothers some people because of the fraction. So we're going to evaluate. So that means we're going to plug in. Here's our formula. 9 fifths c plus 32. Uh, this is a multiplication between the 9 fifths and the c. So your trick is just going to be when you plug the C in, make it look like a fraction. So we're going to put the 50 in. It's multiplied by that, but we have one fraction. So we'll make that one look like a fraction also. Then you have to go with order of operations, which would say multiply before you add. You have to remember how to multiply fractions. Remember, this is where you can cancel on the diagonal. So you can divide out the 5. 5 goes into 5 one time, and into 50 it will go 10. Nothing the other way, and multiply across. So 9 times 10 is 90. Over 1 is 90, plus 32. And now you just add. We have another evaluate question. Just have to be careful what your signs here. So we're going to substitute into the A. Anytime you substitute and there's an exponent, you need to use parentheses. So I'm going to put our 2. They won't really matter this time because the base is positive, but we'll use parentheses anyway. Minus 3, and here you're going to have a multiplication times your b, which is a negative 4. Now you go with order of operations. Your exponent is going to go first. 2 to the second is 2 times 2, which is 4. And here you can either do minus 3 times a negative 4, since there is no exponent, nothing else to break order. Or you could do these, and then you'll have two negatives together. It doesn't matter. Um, minus a negative is going to give you a plus 12. And 4 plus 12 is 16. If you went the other route and you left that negative sitting there, it would be 4 minus a negative 12, and then that would clean up. 
So you would still get the 16, whichever way you were thinking there. For problem 5, we have some absolutes. And in our first one, you will do the absolute first. So absolute of negative 3 will be 3 spaces. And you have the sign left outside. So this one will give us negative 3. The second one has some math inside the absolute. You work from the inside out. These are like signs. They're going to add and keep the sign. You still have the absolute. Then take the absolute, which says how far is negative 7 from 0. It is 7 spaces. The third one is some arithmetic of absolutes, so you're going to do them separately. So first absolute, absolute of negative 2 will be 2 spaces. Absolute of 5 will be 5 spaces. Just bring this sign down. So you have 2 minus 5, or 2, and a negative 5. Different signs, subtract, sign of the larger. Number 6, explain the difference between negative 4 squared and negative 4 squared. The difference that you see is the parentheses. Uh, they do mean something different. It determines whether or not the negative gets to go to the exponent. In the first case, it does not because there is no parentheses, only the 4 is the base. So the 2 just goes to the 4. So you have two copies of the 4, and you have one sign left, which gives you a negative 16 because you only have one negative. The second one with parentheses, everything is part of the base. So the whole negative 4 is what you make two copies of. Sorry. And 4 times 4 is 16. This time, 2 negatives, that's even, gives you a positive. Number 7, write 1 ninth as a decimal. This problem I'm actually not going to put on this test, so you don't have to worry about it now. Uh, we do this kind of operation a lot when we work on percent. So we'll save it until the next test. I'll go ahead and do it since I have it on here. The fastest way to do this is using a calculator. And you just have to make sure you punch it into the calculator top to bottom. You would do 1 divided by 9. If you have to do it by hand, it is a long division. It is 9 into 1. It won't go. Put your decimal, take it up, and then you can add zeros. 9 into 10 will go 1 time. Multiply back. 1 times 9 is 9. Subtract. You can add another 0, bring down. 9 into 10 will go one time. And you can see that you're going to continue to get the same remainder. So the same thing up here. This one is a repeating decimal. The way you show a repeating decimal is to put a bar over the first repeating digit. So 0 0.1. Uh, on your calculator, you'll just see it continue with ones forever. If you had to do a calculation with it, you could round to a position, uh, probably 0.1 would be fine, or 0.11 um, to do some math. But you don't have to worry about it for this test. I just wanted to show it to you since I had it on the review sheet. Our next three problems are just checking to see if we know how to work with signs. So in our first one, we have addition of sign numbers. These are like signs. You're going to add and keep the sign. Second one, this is addition of sign numbers. This time they are different signs. You have a positive and a negative. Different signs you subtract, just biggest minus smallest, sign of the larger, so sign from the 9. Our tenth one, um, this is addition of sign numbers. Um, you can go just straight across, or you could put like signs together. So these two are different signs. We'll subtract sign of the larger. Our next one is different signs, subtract sign of the larger, and last we have different signs, subtract, sign of the larger. If you chose to put like signs together, that's okay to do here because it's all addition. So like signs, the two negatives, they would add and keep the sign, and the two positives would add and keep the sign, and then you have different signs one time. So uh, we would subtract and sign of the larger. So you get the same answer. That's okay to do because it's all addition. If there were some subtracts in between here, you could not do that.